All right, ladies and gents, we want to go through, try a couple problems on conservation of momentum. So the problems I pulled up here from the old assignment I've got, but they're going to show a variety of problem types, and we're just going to walk through and make sure we can solve them. So when we're trying to solve any problems involving conservation of momentum, first thing you want to do, of course, is read the problem, draw a diagram. In this case, the three questions we're going to look at at um, two of them already have a diagram decide if it's which type of collision it is or which type of interaction bouncy sticky or explodey as I prefer to call them then we can set up the variables and we can try to solve um, so in this case problem number 13 says a 45 kilogram girl and a 55 kilogram boy face each other on friction-free roller skates the girl pushes the boy who moves away at a speed of seven meters per second. What is the girl's speed? So I'm going to go ahead and label uh, girl as object one, boy as object two. So one, two, one, two. And reading the problem, setting up a little picture here, they're both at rest sitting there doing nothing. There's a force of interaction between them and they move apart. So they're together in the beginning, separate in the end. That sounds like an explodey style interaction. And so if it's explodey, the equation we use, go ahead and let's see, pull up the their equation sheets here. So we got bouncy, sticky, explodey. Explodey is when they have the two masses together added up at one velocity. And at the end, after the interaction has occurred, the two masses have their own velocities. So it's separate in the end. But the equation that we use for that would be m1 plus m2 added up in the beginning multiplied by whatever their common initial velocity is should equal m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2. And that f there signifies it's after some interaction has happened. So we got the equation. Uh, let's go ahead and list the variables underneath here. So I've got the initial and the final scenarios. And under initial, I'll have M1, V1, M2, and V2. Now, in this case, they have their individual masses, 45 and 55, but neither is moving, they're at rest. And this is totally dictated by the picture. And the problem just is they're facing each other on roller skates, girl pushes boy, it doesn't say they're at rest, but in the picture, there's no indication of motion. So that's what we're going off of. And in the final scenario, they'll still have the same masses, but V1 is our question mark, and V2 is gonna be positive seven meters per second. Moving to the right at seven meters per second, according to the picture. So we can put all those numbers into the problem and we can set it up and solve it. If I put in the fifth, I'm sorry, 45 plus 55, both moving at zero velocity, that's just going to cancel out. Then we have 45, oops, row to 44. I'll turn that into a five times V1 plus 55 times seven. And if we, let's see, I'll get my calculator going. Swoop. Uh, 55 times 7 gives us 385 plus 45 times the unknown velocity all has to equal to 0 so um, if we go ahead and subtract the 385 we'll have negative 385 equals 45 times v1 so V1 should be whatever negative 385 divided by seven is, I'm sorry, seven divided by 45. And we get a negative 8.56. Now the 8.56 is the velocity or the speed, but the negative indicates that the girl's going to the left. And in the picture, that's the direction that they should be going. And Kind of makes sense as well. The lighter object is going to have a greater velocity in the end. So 8.56 is greater than 7. All right, let's take a look at another question. Let's do number 14 here with the dolphin. Uh, feel free to pause this if you need to. 
Uh, it says a dolphin with a mass 100 kilograms is swimming at 2.5 meters per second toward a fish who's swimming away from the dolphin at 0.75 meters per second. A chase is underway. At some point, the dolphin catches the fish and the dolphin glides off with the fish in his mouth at a speed of 1.75 meters per second. What is the mass of the fish that the dolphin has caught? So we're solving for mass here. We're not solving for velocity. And if I'm reading this correctly, they're separate in the beginning and they're together in the end. By the way, amazing dolphin drawing, if I do say so myself. Uh, so they're together in the end. That's going to be a sticky interaction. So write that down here. They're sticking together. Uh, there's not really a catchy interaction. So one thing catches the other. But uh, that means for the formula, we're going to use M1V1 plus M2V2 initially, because they're separate in the beginning. And then they stick together, so M1 plus M2 times whatever the final velocity is gonna be. And again, I'll go back here and show that list of formulas there. So the sticky interaction or sticky collision, that's our formula. Now we can go ahead and make a little list of the variables here. Um, if I say the dolphin is one and the fish is two, M1 would be 100 kilograms. V1 would be 2.5 meters per second. M2, that's our question mark. We don't know what M2 is. Uh, but V2 in the beginning is 0 0.75. So you can already tell this is gonna be a combining like term sort of problem. On the opposite side, uh, for the final situation, V1 is going to be, where they put 1.75, and V2 is also gonna be 1.75 because they're moving off together. So the only thing we don't know is M2. Now this one's a bit tricky because that means we're gonna have, like I said, do some combinations of moving things around. But let's see what it looks like with the numbers that we do have. We have 100, multiplied by 2.5 plus unknown mass times uh, 0.75 equals 100 plus M times 1.75. So we're gonna have to do some multiplication, some distribution and all that good stuff. Um, let's go ahead and do that for this first line, see what we can get done in one step through the magic of video editing, I removed those steps, but I distributed the 1.75 to both terms here. Get 175 and then M2 times that. Uh, nothing I could do here. And with the 100 times 2.5, I get 250. Now I wanna combine like terms, like I mentioned. So we're going to kind of move, uh, let's see, subtract the this M2 term to the other side, subtract the 175 over there as well. Now, once we do those two moves, if I subtract 175 over, 250 minus 175 would be 75. And if I subtract this M2 term over 1.75 Ms and minus 0.75 Ms, this leaves me with one M. Well, that just means that M is equal to 75 kilograms. Oops, I wrote an M1 there. It's supposed to be M2. Now, um, this means that my drawing is not to scale. If that's 100 kilograms and that's 75, something went grossly wrong here in the pictures, but probably just made up some numbers, didn't quite meet reality. But in this case, we can solve for that missing mass though, with a little bit of effort. Not the easiest problem, not too crazy difficult either. Let's take a look at what I've got listed here is number 15. Uh, it says a 0.5 kilogram marble is traveling east with a speed of four meters per second when it collides with a 0.75 kilogram marble traveling north at point, sorry, 5.2. The collision generates sufficient heat to fuse the two marbles together into a single mass. What will be the magnitude and direction of their new velocity? Okay, and as I'm reading that, I'm realizing this is uh, more challenging. So we're gonna stop here. That's not reflective of the problems that you've got on your assignments, in my class anyways. So. We'll stop here and we'll call it quits. Hope this two problems helped.